Yeah, hello. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, sir. So I'll be respectful of time and try to catch up. Just a little background. So I've got here all the all the logos. So I, I want to really thank uh, NAMP, the Nigerian Association of Medical Physicists, for putting this on uh, with the support of the Institute of Physics and Engineering and Medicine. I think this is a great opportunity to be introduced to the field. Uh, as mentioned, I work for Ohio Health. This is a, a, a hospital network uh, in Ohio, USA. And I, I'm also a board member of Radiating Hope, uh, which uh, works to um, provide equipment um, globally for radiation therapy. Uh, and I also went to University of Cincinnati, um, like Jimmy. So I want to touch base about, uh, or, or I want to introduce you to the field of, uh, of um, digital communication in medicine. And, I, and I'll get I'll get into the nitty gritty, um, but I want you to before I even start with the slides. There's a lot of information in here. You don't have to get it all right now. You're going to get the slides later, so you can use these slides as a reference material, and it should be should be more to facilitate a conversation. So I want to. Um, I have a few learning objectives. I have a few things I want you to, to take from this I'm, I'm, that I'm hoping that you get from this. So one, I want you to um, be able to know what an ontology is, how it, how it helps. Uh, then know what DICOM is, um, more than um, maybe what you believe it to be now or, or what I believed it to be uh, when I was first starting as a physicist. And, and then what, what is PAX and how is it useful? So let's get into you know, digital communication. So digital communications, the ones and zeros, uh, instead of, instead of uh, analog uh, uh, continuous signals, uh, they're very dis they can be discretized. And that means that they can be transmitted uh, around the world. Uh, digital communication has, has changed the landscape of the, of the world. We, before we used to have to uh, talk face to face, or we uh, by a telephone, but right now there's over a hundred of you. I think I saw 125 of us on this call, uh, and we're from I'm sure from all over Nigeria and all over the world, and that's a pretty beautiful thing. And the the basics of how digital communication works is that we have uh, digital data that a sender encodes. They, they, they send uh, the, the, that digital data, and then the receiver decodes that, and that, can, that starts with, the, with an image and then goes to a picture on somebody else's desktop. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a translation that occurs. And so I, I just want to kind of draw attention to that. You've got to have that encoder, and you've got to have that decoder, and they've got to have the same, um, uh, they've got to be speaking the same language. So why is this important? Why, why is this like, why is this even cool? So th there's, with increased digitization, there's, there's new opportunities. And there's, there's, there's a lot of businesses. This is a, healthcare is a business. I, 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 I'm in it because I care about people. That's why I do a lot of global work. Uh, but I, let's not be, uh, fool ourselves. Healthcare is a business and there are opportunities there to, um, to help yourself and help your families and help other people. It's kind of a beautiful place to, a, a beautiful place to work. So um, you actually get to help people. These are some of the, the leading trends in healthcare businesses and startups. So this is like from, this is from uh, last year, 3,600 um, emerging startups. And their, their fields, their focus were artificial intelligence, mobile health, internet of medical things. This means devices that connect um, 3D printing, uh, telemedicine, being able to, to, um, dis to interact with patients remotely, uh, blockchain, there's all these different, uh, these different elements, but they, they all rely on, on the digitization and the, uh, the digital communication. So where you can find, a, where you can innovate, 
this is where you can what can lead to entrepreneurship. This is what can lead to um, uh, new opportunities that, that help you. So these are this is those 3,600 companies. This is where they are today. This is a this is a map of healthcare startups. I want to I want to draw attention that that Nigeria is on the map, uh, and there are startups in Nigeria. But this is this is a map of today. This this doesn't say where the where the startups will be tomorrow. So here we have a lot in the U.S. and we have it we have um, a lot in Europe. But we don't we don't know where they are tomorrow. And where are they coming from? It's it's generally assumed that innovations come from rich countries and then they go to, to developing countries. This is the traditional um, paradigm or, or view. But this is changing. Uh, reverse innovation is where, because necessity is the is the mother of all invention. So where re where resources are are fewer, people are more innovative, and people come up with ideas and solutions that create new market opportunities in the develop in the developed countries. So instead of the U.S. developing things and and sending them to Africa, I know in the future. Africa will be developing these things and sending them to the US. So where are these opportunities? It's where the knowledge is at. The opportunities are where the knowledge is. And with the, in context of today's discussion, uh, the data, the, the medical imaging data is freely available for you to innovate. These are, this is the breakdown of those different um, areas. Almost 20% was in artificial intelligence. This is a fancy name for machine learning. Um, and I'm gonna, what I'm gonna talk to you about today is how um, machines can interpret things and then you can teach them or they can teach us. These are, these are so the 20% of things, 20% um, of startups are focused on this area. But a lot of these other things, they're all reliant upon digital communications and medicine. And again, the opportunities are where the knowledge is. The knowledge is yours for the taking. So this is my start for the, my discussion because it's going to get really boring. I'm sorry, but I want you to know that this can benefit not just you, but everyone. And this is that's the fun that's the fun thing. So, DICOM is digital imaging, and it's and communications and medicine. This is actually what DICOM is: digital imaging and communications in medicine. So. It, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty, but the, the big picture is that it's, it's the imaging data with all the other patient data associated with it and embedded. So it, instead of just, instead of just a, a, a single picture, you have a picture with all the, the, the metadata, with all the, the patient data attached to it and it, and it, and it comes together. So it's all embedded and inseparable from the image. So instead of just having a picture and like, what is this? It actually it has all that information about what it is in, built into it in medical terminology. So the, the DICOM standard is, is free uh, and it can be found on, the, on their website. You can, you can download it. It's, um, it's like a book length um, and it's associated and it's maintained by the NEMA, National Electrical Manufacturer Association. Um, from a practical perspective, um, you work with DICOM uh, implementations. You work with the, the, the implementation of DICOM. And again, I'll, I'll get into um, exactly what DICOM is. I haven't, I've only told you the, what the word is, but you'll see exactly what it is. Um, all devices and software, they work with specific parts of DICOM. Because DICOM is a very large uh, structure it's, uh, it's not used by all uh, different elements. So there's a, each device has a, a conformance statement that says what, what part of the DICOM um, standard it works with. So as I've already um, shared, and, I, and I, I understand that I'm a little repetitive, this is just how, what I do. So it's just kind of the, 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 the. So the DICOM standard is the backbone of, medical, of modern medical imaging. And understanding it is important if you're interested in any form of medical work, decision making, image analysis, research development. If you want to be a nurse or you want to be a physician 
well, hopefully you want to be a physicist, this DICOM is going to be, um, come into play. So it, it drives uh, all parts of digital image acquisition, transfer and interpretation. So the, the collection of images, the storage of images, um, the, even, this, this, even the control of the display um, in, in, in diagnostic radiology, um, because they're looking at subtle differences, it's very important that the displays are reproducible and, they, and they're always um, emitting the same light intensity. That, that, that is embedded in the, the DICOM um, image. So here's some history. Uh, 1982, uh, the American College of Radiology and the, the National Electrical Manufacturer Association, they said, we've got to get um, uh, a communication standard together because uh, digital um, communication is, 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 is happening it's, it's, and it's growing. But we need, so we need, to, we need to get something together so that we can speak the same language. So in 1985, they published the version 1.0 of their, of their uh, first um, standard. Uh, that included a data dictionary, which is like a vocabulary. It's a list of, of words and shared definitions. Then version two in 88, and then version three in 1992, it took 10 years. And that was, that was the first iteration of DICOM. Um, and DICOM has been growing since then. So we're, we're um, 40 years in to DICOM, uh, uh, well, 30 years into DICOM, but 40 years in since, the, since its inception or the start of it. So it's taken some time and it's always growing. So DICOM's a standard. What is a standard? So we talked about digital communications and we talked about uh, encoders and decoders. If you, got, if you have the wrong decoder, uh, if you have a non-standard decoder, you're gonna get gibberish out from your, from your binary data, from your ones and your zeros. You're not gonna be able to understand it. But if you have the same decoder as, this, as inc the encoder that was used, you're actually gonna get intelligible language out. You'll understand what the sender sent you. So that's what DICOM is, is it's a template, it's a standard template that allows um, people from all over the world to speak the same language in terms of medical images. Here's the, that one of those words that I asked about, uh, the, one of those keywords. So ontology, DICOM is an ontology. It's a shared language. So an ontology, this is the, this is the, the, the technical definition. It describes a set of entities and their relationships. So it formally specifies the entities in a domain and their properties or attributes. It describes a system and how things work together. So um, the cool thing about an ontology is that it's computable. This means that it's highly structured and can be understood by a computer. So this means that it can lead to machine learning. Uh, it can lead to uh, easy uh, retrieval and uh, parsing. So you can learn. That's the big thing. The DICOM ontology is readable by machine, by humans and computable by machines. So you can read it, and you can understand it. And because it has a shared vocabulary, and a, a very strict vocabulary, the machines can too. So this is where the machine learning and those 20% of startups, this is where they can get their data. So, so on, the DICOM ontology has, has two parts. It has a real world part where it defines real world objects. And then it's got a DICOM entity model, um, essentially the, the digital objects um, or the computable objects. So this real world model describes the patients, the studies, the images. The entity model describes those connections between the real world entities and the classes. So it's, it's a formal and explicit and logically consistent description of entities. I like this little triangle here. Um, this is kind of what an ontology does. It ties terms and concepts and things in the real world together. It's a shared language. And if you understand that language, then you, can, you don't need to learn it. Um, you don't need to learn a hundred different languages, but you can, if you learn DICOM, you can get image data or medical data from China, from Japan, from, from Australia, from Russia, from all over the world, 
all over Africa and, and really um, utilize it to, to learning and, and helping others. So now I think we're, we're, we're kind of to the point where you, know, you, can, you can also answer what DICOM is. So it re represents years of effort, it's a standard. Um, it's not just a, a, an image or a file format, but it covers the archiving, the communication, the output, um, and, and also the, the, those files that create these pictures, that lead to these pictures. And what's not seen here is the header, which is the metadata, which has the patient's name, the patient's diagnosis, when the, when the study occurred, all that other information that's, that's important in putting that, that, that image into context. So it's, again, it's, all, it's an all-encompassing standard and so much so that some people refer to it as a set of standards rather than just a standard. And this is, these are all the different parts of it. Um, I wanna draw your attention to, to, to part six, the data dictionary. I think this is one of the most important parts. Uh, a lot of these other elements, um, they're, they're important as well. But, and this is why if you're interested in, in uh, entrepreneurship in this field, this is important to know. Um, but the data dictionary, it's that common language, those sh that shared vocabulary. That's what, that's what allows you to understand what I'm saying is the fact that we can both speak English. Uh, I wish I could speak your native tongue. I, I wish I could speak Spanish, but it's, I'm glad that we can, we can both speak English so that you can hear what I have to say and, and hopefully get something um, useful out of it. So what's the clinical impact? You know, what, if you're talking about these standards, um, it's often overlooked the, the clinical impact of DICOM impacts. Uh, but DICOM drives the, the workflow. This is, this, we've set out a map uh, that, that, and so now um, that we've created this map with DICOM, DICOM has essentially become a map. This is how this drives how um, the patient interacts and the, the records are kept and stored. Um, and it also allows us, because it's digital, it allows us to, 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 to compare easily to uh, different time points. So we can see how the patient was six months ago and how the patient is today. And comparing those, we can get a differential diagnosis. What's changed? Uh, what's gotten better? What's gotten worse? So, and it's no film to lose or underexposed. Uh, it's it's all there at our fingertips. So what 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 is PAX? I mentioned this, but, uh, DICOM and PAX. So this is that third that third key. It's the you know ontology, DICOM and PAX. So PAX is the picture archiving and communication system, and it's essentially the physical manifestation of DICOM. If 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 uh, DICOM was was a soul, PAX is the body. So. This is the, uh, I've got over here kind of two images. Uh, on, the, on the left is a mini PAX. You know, we've got different um, departments we, uh, with different imaging technology. So like nuclear medicine, ultrasound, mammography. And then they're all going into the, the, the enterprise PAX, which is like the server, which holds all the data. PAX is a little bit more than that. It's all these network connections all these modalities, and then also all those, um, the, the servers. And, and for a large hospital network like mine, um, we've got, uh, we're all over the, the, the state of Ohio. I've got um, uh, 11 uh, linear accelerators and they're all, they're all in different parts and they all need to communicate together. So the, the data from all those different hospitals um, go into packs and we, then we can share about the different, the different patient information. So again, uh, getting into more of the nitty gritty of, of PACS, um, we've got the modalities like CT scanning, uh, um, digital radiography, uh, nuclear medicine, ultrasound, all these the different modalities. Uh, we've got the archives, which uh, are the databases and the servers. And we've also got workstations for viewing. Um, so the modalities, digital image archives, workstations, and then a, ne a network 
that, that ties all these things together. So Ethernet, uh, a lot of wireless, um, if, it's, if it's encrypted. Um, and an I like an example uh, of this, this kind of system is your cell phone. I think a lot of you are on your, your cell phone right now. You've all got smartphones with, with, um, with cameras. So you take a picture, that's your modality. It's your cell phone is your, 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 your camera. That's your imaging device. So you can take a picture and you can, you can put that onto Facebook or you can send that to put that in WhatsApp or you, you archive that um, onto a web service. And then your friends, they, they connect to that same archive, whether it's WhatsApp or, or, or Telegram, whatever. And then they're reviewing that digital image that you sent. It's, it's, the, same, it's the same process with packs, um, except, and it's digital too. The thing is a JPEG image, like what you take with your phone is not gonna be the same as, uh, as a medical image. Those medical images are standardized and that's what DICOM is all about is standardizing the format of those medical images. So I, I told you it was gonna get boring. So here it goes, it's gonna get boring. <laughs> so the DICOM uses its own language um, and it's based on its model of the real world. So in this case, you've got a real world object and this has got a little, uh, a, little uh, uh, a dot in there because it can't be, um, that real world object cannot be manifested digitally, but its attributes can be, the, the elements of that real world object can be. And those are defined as, in this case, as the patient, the study, uh, the series, the images, and there can be multiple types of images for, for one patient, um, the, the visit. These are, all, these are all things that can be defined digitally. So we've got this real world interaction that occurred, and then we've got all these attributes of it. And so these, these things can be digitized and recorded and often are in the DICOM header and the DICOM uh, files. So the entity relationships, like how these things work together are defined. This is all part of what makes DICOM powerful is the fact that these descriptions can be can be understood and known. And uh, so here we have one patient makes N visits, has N studies, and those studies are related to M results um, and are also related to um, each, each study is has N number of images, uh, N number of graphics. So these, th there's a, there's a very, and this is where I talked about how the DICOM uh, drives the patient flow. But once we've created these maps, we tend to follow them. Um, so this, this has been strictly defined and then is now can be mined. This data that we, that we keep, you can use this and retrieve this um, later to learn from. So the results of multiple studies might be consolidated from one interpretation. So this is why the study is separate from the images because the results, these results could be related to several different studies. It, maybe it takes um, three different studies for the physician to understand what the diagnosis is. And then that diagnosis is in the result. So these relationships, um, while strictly defined, they have, um, they, have, they have different ways of expressing themselves. And like I said, there's a lot of words here you can come back and read these later. And um, I, I'm gonna send this, this out to you. Uh, you don't have to you know, catch everything uh, the first time. Um, hopefully you're interested and you wanna learn more. Um, and that's, that's really my hope is that you, that you realize that, that DICOM is really powerful. And if I know this language, just like if I know English, um, I'm gonna be able to communicate with a lot more people than I can currently. So, the patient describes uh, the properties of, uh, of a patient. And the, this patient in the real world, we can't digitize this person. All we can digitize are their attributes. We can digitize their name. We can digitize their ID, uh, their date of birth, um, weight, sex. We can, that can all be digitized. We're not gonna be able to put um, John or, or Frank or, or whoever into the computer. 
but we can record these, these values. And those groups of attributes, those groups of attributes are referred to as an information object definition. And there are lots of different IODs. These, so this group of attributes uh, is, is a block. It's like a block of data. There's lots of different blocks of data um, for those processes that we talked about earlier. So there's the patient, then there's the visit, there's the study. Each of these are described by a block of attributes. And because they're strictly defined, again, this means that the data can be mined and, and interpreted and computed. That's the big part, is because of those strict definitions, because this vocabulary is formal and formalized, you can, use, you can teach a computer how to interpret it and how to read it. So I mentioned before that data dictionary. I think that this is one of the most important parts of the DICOM standard is the data dictionary. Like I said, each of these elements is strictly defined. They're, 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 they're not, um, they're not willy-nilly. They, uh, they have data tags, locations, and then they have, a, they, have um, they have descriptions that they have to follow, and they also have uh, uh, data types. Now I know I'm running short on time, so I'm gonna kind of move a little faster and get down. I'm not gonna kind of cover all this. I, this is the thing, is it, it's just to give you a taste. I can't, I can't tell you it all now, but hopefully you see the opportunity and you, see, and you realize that this is maybe something that I, I wanna learn more about. But this, this is all formalized, um, how, how these things communicate to e with each other. And I mentioned before that not every, um, the ultrasound is not gonna interact um, with DICOM the same way that a CT scanner is, or the same way that a printer is, or the same way that a server is each of these, or the same way that maybe a mobile app is. Each of these is gonna have their own uh, uh, DICOM conformant statement. So they're each gonna to adhere to the DICOM standard in their own way. And sometimes this DICOM conformant statement is even more important than the manual. Because if you understand that, that DICOM language, then you're gonna understand, oh, well, this is how it sends blocks of data. These are the, these are the attributes that it records. These, these are the IODs that it, that, it, that it records. So what are the benefits of DICOM? I'm getting, I'm getting, I know I'm running low on time again, so I'm getting close to that. So the benefits of the DICOM, it's this universal standard. It's this, this, this language that allows interoperability, allows things to, to work the same in Japan, as in Nigeria, as in Florida, as in California, uh, as in anywhere. Um, as long as we adhere to it uh, and, and are clear about what elements we are adhering to, it allows for us to uh, communicate all around the world. It gives excellent image quality. The, the DICOM has um, been given to support 16 bits, so that's 65,000 shades of gray. So really subtle details that it may be even hard for a human to, to interpret. We've made it so that uh, the computers can, can extract that. This is this artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, all these things are really, these things that are really hot right now. DICOM allows these things to, to occur. And this, is, this is an example of where they're doing a feature extraction then to, to they can make statements about, well, is this a, is this a liver um, metastasis? Is this a, is, this a, um, is this a malignancy or what is this? We can train the computers to, to do these things. The DICOM supports all the different uh, imaging modalities, not just not just ultrasound or or a, um, oroscopy, um, but CT. All these different things are driven by uh, by DICOM, and it allows it also it stores different parameters that allow, that allow you to manipulate the data in different ways. One of those, those ways is um, creating 3D images from a group of 2D images. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna do that project, but this is hopefully, uh, if you're interested and you wanna do a project, uh, I, I would love to help you uh, learn how to turn a bunch of an image stack of 2D images into 
a three-dimensional image uh, with, using Python. So these, this is this is uh, kind of the how to enter into the field because you know you read a lot, but you really learn from doing. We learn from making mistakes and and clutching along. So uh, getting your hands in there and, and doing a project, I would love to help facilitate that. Uh, and I also can can help with this. Um, again, the, I, I've hit this again and again with the ontology earlier. Um, this is a this is kind of a picture of the Tower of Babel. So you know when when everybody could speak the same language, DICOM allows that with the data dictionary with the shared language, we can communicate. We can communicate uh, across the world, and really that makes us stronger and more powerful. Uh, one of uh, this is the, the last one of these benefits, but because of that that clarity and communication, the steps are really well defined. And this in this case, this is uh, radiotherapy that DICOM uses its own or uh, radiotherapy uses its own set of DICOM files or DICOM standards. Uh, they have we use the images. Um, we create we have we have a, a DICOM plan. Um, and using this the standard really makes thing the errors less likely to occur because because the flow is uh, is there and, and now people what people are doing is they're they're automating processes um, because because those um, uh, these sequences are well defined. Okay, I spoke really fast. I hope you got something. I hope you have some questions. Um, thank you for, for inviting me and uh, thank you for listening.